Hi, I'm Kurt Thompson. Welcome to the first day of the four-month Brass Upper Register Program. And this video series is going to go just about as close and follow the same track um, we would if we were just live, you and I, over the phone or via Skype. So that's um, one of the uh, values is that, um, well, first of all, you got to remember this is a momentum-based program. So you are starting out with zero of my techniques and in four months you will be able to do all 65 techniques in one day. And that's quite a feat of strength. So there is that momentum aspect. I'm going to ask you to try to do your best to keep this momentum going, even though we're not interacting live. The, um, the momentum aspect is actually, actually like one of the secret ingredients in my course, if you want to really call it that. It's um, just the ability just to kind of um, sneak a little bit more techniques and build more strength a little bit by little bit, um, almost like boiling a frog in warm water, right? They don't know that they're cooked until it's too late. Same thing with you. Uh, you won't really realize all the strength that's happening until you take a look back and like, especially at the halfway point where you can do 30 of these techniques in one day and feel great and you're stronger. Um, it'll dawn on you at some point. So that's how this works. We trickle out between three techniques and sometimes all the way up to eight or nine techniques in, um, in a weekly sitting. The format of the Brass Upper Register course goes like this if you are working with me live and I want to make it pretty close if when, we're, when you're following this video tutorial. The first four lessons are all brand new techniques. The fifth lesson, there are no brand new techniques and it's a time for review, a time to recap, a time to really go back and do a little dusting, a little polishing, a little shedding, make sure that you got the techniques down. Now, and then I'll just continue on with the format. So then lesson six through nine would be all new techniques again. Lesson 10 would be a big review. We go back and recap. Lesson 11 would typically typically be live lesson face-to-face -face, uh, where I'm gonna be demonstrating some techniques over using Skype video. We don't have to worry about that here because I can demonstrate the techniques um, to your right through this uh, media. Lessons um, 12 through 15 would again be all new techniques. And then the last lesson, the 16th week, uh, would be kind of a recap and just a you know, powwow and saying our, saying our goodbyes and all that kind of good stuff. So that said, you and I don't have the ability to do a review, obviously, through this media. So I'm making an option, and you really need to consider it, that um, you take advantage of some type of review with me live. So you will have gone through four of these lessons, and um, it would be good if I could hear you do them, answer any questions that you may have, and uh, basically we can do the review by phone because that's how I normally would do it anyway. If you're outside the US, we would just do it by Skype audio. But it's good for me to spot check things and make sure you're doing um, the techniques the way you're supposed to. And uh, also I listen for things like um, any extra air in your tone, brittleness, tightness, stiffitis, loss of flexibility, and things like that that um, are kind of part and parcel of really working up a register. You really have to be careful of that and keep that at bay. And there's some things built into the course that will do that. So anyway, this four month video course, this is the first video that you've likely gotten. And we're going to be doing exactly what I would do with you if you were speaking to me right now on the phone or over Skype. And we're going to get into that. Typically, when I talk to people the first um, lesson, I also remind them of a couple of things. And it's at the top of my syllabus here. Um, number one, I would go over the agreement, so you probably will have that. Um, I might send the, you that agreement link, or I might send you a modified version. Basically, it just tells you how to get the best results out of the course. And I've already mentioned um, why the course actually is so successful. It's that momentum. And uh, there's no other course like this in the world that has this momentum that you build on. Most other courses throw, throw the whole kit and caboodle right away at you. Um, I guess the uh, even the Claude Gordon method, if you want to look at the systematic approach, he has 52 weeks, but they're all pretty much equal equal based. In other words, you're not you're not adding course after course and doing them all you know at once. You do one for seven days and you go on to another one that's kind of like a sideways move. But here we're piling on top. It's the only course in the world right now that has this. We're piling techniques on top, and you're doing these techniques every day. So um, anyway, we're going to move on to. Um, something that you should have already taken a look at, look at, and many of you already have, because I usually have this at the footer 
or the signature of my email and a lot of other videos I do. It's a secret uh, brass bonus technique. And so if you haven't already got that, send me an email because that's really the best way, the best protocol to follow these techniques as far as the practice and your rest and how to strategize that. Simply said, you definitely want to take your practice time, your average practice time divided by four and practice in four sessions per day and having at least a minimum of 30 minutes of rest. That's it in a nutshell. There's actually a little bit more to it. But um, um, so if you can, um, that doesn't mean just my techniques. It means everything. So if you're used to practicing two hours a day, you would like to divide that up into half hour segments and include a half hour break at a minimum. So you can actually include more than that. You can actually do a half an hour before you go to school or work, come back as soon as you get back to your other half hour, then go eat or whatever. So now you've already got half your practice done. So that's kind of how it goes. But um, you probably want to take a look at that, um, the secret uh, brass technique that I have. Um, another reminder, once you hit, once you've gone through eight of these lessons, uh, you really want to start thinking about taking one full day off the horn, 24 hours every 10 days. So for the, last, for the last half of this course, and I would ask you that if you were in a live lesson with me, you really want to take 24 hours off the horn, no nothing, no buzzing, no pedal tones, no warm up. You want to do that uh, three times a month only just for the last two months. So that would be a total of six times. After that, you can do what you want. It just buys you a little extra insurance. It helps make sure that you're recuperating because then the techniques really start to pile on. And I want to make sure that you get the best results out of it. And you can't if you're weak or if you're tearing down yourself and you're not um, recuperating. So remember that um, on lesson, um, this probably going to be somewhere around like the eighth or ninth video. You really want to um, remind yourself to um, take off that 24 hours from the horn. Another reminder is that um, even though you see me playing trumpet, and that's my main instrument, I actually have taught all the brass instruments. I'm a former band director and um, taught up in Washington State, um, Tennessee. I also had a credential, I believe, at one time in Kentucky and Ohio. Also California, uh, I've taught there as well. So a former band director, I actually have taught all the instruments. Of course, we're all good on one more than the others, right? And trumpet happens to be mine. I did get decent on trombone and baritone and euphonium. Um, so, so on French horn. Tuba, uh, not so much, although I did um, pound away at it a few times. This course is for all brass players. You just have to do a little extra work. Um, if you're um, euphonium, baritone, trumpet clef, you really don't. If you're French horn a little bit, um, you can play on the B flat side of the horn. Um, let's see, trombone, you will have to do a little transposition there. Um, and of course, tuba. But that's, uh, this is taught as if um, um, you're a trumpet player, so I kind of speak that language, but really almost all the techniques, and I'll give you a little heads up if it doesn't really apply to your instrument. But basically, this whole course uh, has been taught to all the brass instruments, so with success. So you, if you're just not playing trumpet, you might have just a little extra work to kind of figure out maybe some of the notes or whatever, how they transpose or to get the, the right range and all that kind of stuff. But it's um, not very difficult. And again, if you're getting the review thing, the review package that I'm offering, that would be something you might want to address with me um, if we speak live after you've gone through four of the techniques. So, um, okay, that's the, what I usually, I have this at the front of my syllabus. That's what, what I usually do. And now we're getting to the first uh, techniques um, of the first week. This is what I would give you in the first week. Now, um, some of these techniques I've already um, recorded in previous videos. And if I've already done that, I'm going to just um, splice in that video because I've already done the work and it's already there. And I've, I've already double checked the, some of those videos to make sure that they were good. And most of them are pretty good. So if you happen to see me look different or a different back, background of surroundings because I spliced in what I've already done before. So the um, techniques you're going to get in lesson one for the first week would be the lip buzz technique, the low, re low relax lip buzz to triple pedal C, and the Claude Gordon method or technique the Kurt Thompson way. So that's typically what I give out in the first um, week. So we're going to go over that right now. Um, the lip buzzing technique is really pretty cool because it actually helps you find a little bit more about yourself. Um, there are certain, um, I guess, axioms that go along with the lip buzzing. In other words, you typically can't buzz your lip buzz uh, freely the same um, high range that you play on your instrument. doesn't really matter what instrument you play, but uh, 
if you're if trumpet players, if you play a high C, you're just not likely to buzz a high C. If that if you're capping out at high C, it just doesn't work that way. Um, trombone players, if you can hit the um, Let's just say you can get the uh, B flat an octave higher than than the B flat above the staff. Maybe you guys call that double B flat, but uh, you know that's pretty decently high note uh, for trombone players. So if you can actually play that on the, on the trombone, don't expect to lip buzz that. And here's why: there's uh, kind of a universal, uh, I guess, a law of uh, buzzing and playing that I've actually discovered myself. I haven't seen this written anywhere. It's that. You typically have in a textbook perfect world an octave discrepancy or an octave ratio in lip buzzing in your highest notes. And the way it works is whatever you can get on your instrument, you would like to and desire to be about an octave down from that when you're free lip buzzing. So trumpet players, if you play a high C, you would like to be able to lip buzz the middle C. French horn players, if you can go all the way up to the G right above the staff or A, you'd like to be able to lip buzz that second line G. Um, and then the, the rest of you guys, if you're playing different instruments, you, those examples should have allowed you to kind of figure it out for yourself. And so now most people that come to the course aren't usually in the textbook perfect world and most aren't buzzing an octave, um, under the range or usually about an octave, octave and a half to more, sometimes two octaves and two and a half octaves. And that pretty much denotes a lack of lip strength, little, a little bit of lack of obvious strength, but a lot, a lot, a lot of a weakness in your um, lips and so we're, we're going to be um, trying to balance that out. You could have strong aperture but weak lips and they, they kind of um, work against each other. So the lip buzzing technique comes up first. So um, I usually just have, I'll be speaking to trumpet players so everybody else are going to have to transpose but um, I, have, I would have a trumpet player um, try to buzz a low C and typically I would demonstrate that for them first. So. I'm going to play a low C on the trumpet, which is a concert B flat for everyone else. And I would just simply try to buzz that note. So I want you to go ahead and stop um, your download right now or the video. And uh, trumpet players have it easy because all they have to do is do the C. Everybody else, you need to figure out what note that would be for you. Um, I can give you some hints that would probably be like the second line B flat for trombone and and um, baritone bass bass clef for um, tuba that's likely to be um, um, let's see here it's likely to be your low your low B flat um, below the bass clef staff or it could be your F um, let's see what else French horn um, somewhere right maybe right around your bottom line E possibly even G and um, who am I forgetting? I think we cut, I think we kind of covered all the bases there. If I forgot you, I'm sorry. But anyway, you should stop the video, figure out your note, and try to buzz it. And now turn me back on. So once you've figured out that you can buzz that note, great. Now we're going to try to buzz up the scale a little bit. And just see, you wanted to see how high you can go in a scale format. So that's the concert B flat again. I'm going to buzz it. Now let me see if I can go up the scale. Ideally, you would like to be able to do that on your instrument. And um, most often the case is that most, when I say most, I don't mean 51%, I mean nine times out of 10, people cannot do that. So what we'll end up doing is trying to figure out where you're gonna start. So you're probably gonna want to pause this and, and buzz a couple notes to figure out where you're gonna be. Many people can't even buzz that. Many trumpet players come in and they can't buzz the low C. They end up sometimes buzzing the pedal C and that's all they can get. And sometimes they buzz the, um, the G. So um, you may not be able to get the low C, but if you do, or if you're a younger player, don't feel bad. This is all about just finding out where you are. And I'm just trying to give you a frame of reference. So. What you need to do is find out where you are. It doesn't matter if you're lower. Um, what is important to find out is where you are and then we start building from there. So that goes for everybody who's playing all the other instruments as well. So now once you find out kind of the vicinity where you can buzz, I'm just going to pretend it's right around the low C. Uh, the lip buzzing technique that I give out to you live is going to be the same here. We have a format um, that's like this. You do the scale up, you do the arpeggio up, and you hit your target note. Those are your goals. Doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do that for the first week. 
you're going to try to do the best that you can, um, or you're going to you're going to go down lower in range so that you can accommodate that. So if you couldn't do that on low C, Trevor players, you might have to start on low G. Let's just pretend that you let's just pretend that's the case. You couldn't really do well on the low C. You couldn't get up to the middle C. So we have to go down to G, concert F. Okay, I would buzz it. Now, let's see if I can actually do the scale there. Yes, so the C scale, let's just pretend that didn't come in, but the concert F low G scale does, great. So you can do the scale up. What was the other part of the format? It's the arpeggio next. Get your starting note. Got that down. Now you got something to work with. Now your target note is just going to be the top note, the G or the concert F. And you just target that one. Now that would be one round. So um, during, pay attention to this because I'm giving you directions on what you're going to be doing for the first week. So for the first week, you're going to be doing probably somewhere between five and six rounds of those. So you might want to start off on the low G. Keep in mind it's all rolled up based on your instrument and then rest. Uh, maybe 20, 30 seconds, go for the A flat. That, that comes out great. Go for the A. Now you're working it. Go to the B flat. Now it's getting hard. You're not quite getting the B flat out good. Well, you've done four rounds. Rest. Uh, try the B. Now, if the B doesn't come out, uh, you can go back and try the B flat one more time. And keep in mind, we're talking about, when I say go to the A flat, the A, the B flat, the B, we're talking about the whole series, the whole protocol of scale up or page you up at the target note. So when I say go to the A flat, I'm talking about do the A flat scale up, do the A flat or page you up, hit your target note of the upper A flat, and then rest 30 seconds. So that's what I mean. So each round includes a scale up, the arpeggio up, and your target note. After that, you run a rest 20 or 30 seconds. So um, now that's all you're going to do. So now mark this down. For the first week of the lip buzzing technique that I give to you and give to you now and give to you if you were working with me live, you're going to cap your lip buzzing out somewhere around 8 minutes to 10 minutes a day. That's it. Now make note of this. You only do that for the first week. I call it the shock and awe. Remember George Bush? Bush? Shock and awe. So we're just kind of shocking everything up. You're not going to make a whole lot of gains through the first week because we're really preparing you for the things to come. Um, starting on the second um, week or the second video that you're going to get, you need to already have reminded yourself that you're going to chop that in half. So the second week of lip buzzing goes down to five minutes. And then the third week of lip buzzing goes down to three minutes and we keep it status quo at three minutes for the remainder of the course. So first week, no more than 10 minutes of lip buzzing a day. Second week, you chop it in half to five minutes. And so you're going to see your rounds diminish. So the first week, you could probably do five or six rounds if you're adding rest appropriately. Um, the um, second week, maybe you're somewhere around, you know, four rounds, give or take, maybe three or four. And then the um, every week after that, starting the third week, you're probably going to be somewhere around two or three rounds because um, three minutes actually goes by pretty quick. So... Um, Anyway, that's what you want to be doing. The whole goal of the lip buzzing, of course, is to build a range. So uh, we never want you to flounder around on something that you can do. So after you, you're in the course, let's just say that you started on G and now you you can, after a month and a half, you can get, a, get up to the middle C. Uh, well, you don't want to just be happy with that. You're going to keep pushing and keep pushing. So you're going to try to stretch that C sharp or the D. That's how we do it in this course. The default for lip buzzing, as far as dynamics, is always as soft as you can lip buzz. Now, keep in mind, the higher you go, you, you will get some more intensity and a little bit more volume to happen. But still, you want to strive to be as soft as you can, knowing full well that when you're above the staff, especially treble club staff, the more sound will come out. But still, the default is try to buzz as soft as you can. Never try to power out lip buzzing or uh, you know, trumpet players are notorious for wanting to, to overthink stuff. So trumpet players out there, if you think that you should buzz louder because that's going to make you have a more um, powerful sound, a more open sound, and you're going to build up super chops, you're absolutely dead wrong. You are 180 uh, away from um, what's from the real deal here. The louder that you buzz, the more you're going to spread your tone, put air in your tone, and screw up your chops. 
So do not buzz as loud as you can. And I'm mainly talking to trumpet players out there. It's logical, but we're chasing the elusive obvious here. And this not this uh, pursuit of upper register and high range is not logical. Most of it isn't. So don't um, overdo the lip buzzing and don't um, do overdo the volume on the lip buzzing. So there you have it. That's the first technique that I give anybody that, that enters the four month brass upper register course. And again, you're really gonna wanna probably take advantage of the review that would be coming up in case you have any complications with that. Let's move on to the second technique. This is the second technique that you would get. Everybody gets this, this technique next. It's called low relaxed lip buzz to triple pedal C. Now you can uh, transpose that or adjust that um, regard, depending on what instrument you play. So triple pedal concert B flat. So we're going way, way, way down. Um, that This would even be low for tuba players. I mean, it's getting down there pretty low. The purpose of this one is not for building range. The purpose of this is to develop a nice free buzz, um, a nice relaxed free buzz, and actually to dissipate some tension and, and brittleness and uh, inflexibility in your chops. It's usually the first thing I do every day. I'll either do some pedal tones myself, or I'll actually do that technique. Uh, I really love it. Now, the funny thing about that technique is it also is a little barometer of your chops. So on days that your chops are great and you're having a good day, you'll likely be able to do that. On days that you had a gig and played you know, a lot of uh, loud high notes or just played a lot of brass quintet, you might find that the next day when you go to do this particular technique, it's like you're hitting speed bumps down the way. You, that's not smooth. So um, um, I actually happened to do a lot of playing last night. So I'm probably not gonna give the best rendition of this one simply because I would have what I just told you. So the uh, protocol is similar to the regular lip buzz, and we're gonna do the scale down, the arpeggio down, and the um, glissando down. Here we go. Play the starting note. Keep in mind all the other instruments you need to transpose this for yourself. Okay, so I got lucky there, uh, but I did it all in one breath. So you want to try, strive to do yours the same way, all these in one breath. And notice it wasn't choppy, it was just pretty smooth all the way down. Next one would be the arpeggio down. Starting note. Okay, and you probably noticed the last five or six notes, it becomes a kind of a hybrid lip buzz slash lip flutter or lip flap. So there's a little bit of lip flutter, lip flap happening there. Now let me do the glissando down. And there you have it. Um, sometimes I do one of those, sometimes I'll just, that's one round basically. Scale down, arpeggio down, glissando down. Sometimes I'll leave it at that, and sometimes I will do two of those. But basically that's the low relax, live, buzz, the triple pedal C. And um, some of you, uh, many of you probably can just start right there on the same note that I did. Uh, I think trombone players, I've seen them been able to do that. Um, baritone, euphonium sometimes, French horn definitely. Um, tuba player probably not you're probably not used to buzzing that tight so um, you might just start down lower and just go as low as you can so that is a low relax lip buzz the triple pedal C you definitely want to do that as soft as you can now uh, this at this time in the course uh, you and I would have already been interacting would have been talking we would be approaching probably 45 minutes or whatever um, in the lesson of course we don't have that interaction here so uh, we're gonna move on to what would be the actual last technique I'd give out in week one. And this is the um, Claude Gordon uh, method or Claude Gordon technique, the Kurt Thompson way. It's not really um, accurate for me to say it's a duplicate of Claude Gordon stuff because it really is not. And I also put my own twist on it. So I just mentioned Claude Gordon because it does have the essence of Claude Gordon, 
but I'm I'm not really plagiarizing or, or borrowing his stuff note for note. I, I kind of do my own thing with it. So uh, this is one of the uh, mega techniques of the course. Um, oh, by this by the way, this reminds me. The default for all techniques in this course is every day. So that's very important. I should have said that up front, but it doesn't matter. You're, you're, you're watching this now. The default is for every technique. In other words, down the road, if you're going, hmm, am I supposed to do this technique every day or what? Every day. Unless you hear the words come from my mouth and not to do it every day, you do it every day. So when in doubt, every technique that I give you is for every day, except here comes one of the exceptions. The Claude Gordon technique um, tends to be better if you do it every other day simply because I've actually tweaked the Claude Gordon technique to make it a little bit more potent and more intense. And you're gonna need that day off. Um, comeback players and people who haven't been on the horn for 30 or 40 years, and anybody else that's over the age of 60, um, since we, you and I can't interact really, um, I'm going to recommend that you do the Claude Gordon technique every two days, okay? Uh, so every other day, let me give you an example. I'm stating the obvious, but I'm just I'm just not making the assumptions here. That would mean, for example, Monday, you would play the Claude Gordon, not on Tuesday. Come back and play it on Wednesday. Don't play it on Thursday. Come back and play it on Friday. Skip Saturday. Come back on Sunday. Skip Monday. Go to Tuesday. Every other day. Okay? Uh, for comeback players who really haven't been playing a lot, they've skipped 20 or 30 years out in their horn, now they're back. Or for anybody else over 60 to 65, uh, it's in my experience with four and a half years of a lot of people in this course that age you really need two days so uh, for so the people I just mentioned you would do Monday you would skip Tuesday and Wednesday and then you would do the Claude Gordon on Thursday then you would rest Friday Saturday and then you would do your Claude Gordon on Sunday you see how that follows so if you're in that demographic that I just mentioned I want you to do it every two days so uh, the Claude, Claude Gordon method and technique, the Kurt Thompson way, is coming at you. I've already pre-recorded this one. It's a great one. And enjoy. Hey, we're going to do a little bit of Claude Gordon my way. And not taking away from Claude Gordon at all. You know, I actually did the systematic approach a long, long time ago. Right out of high school. I did it actually two years worth. So that's like two times all the way around. And it worked. It actually did work. Um, there's a couple of um, negatives with the Claude Gordon system. Number one, it takes 52 weeks to find out if it's going to work. If you follow his system, he doesn't believe in trying it out for 10 weeks or trying it out for half a year. He actually wants you to do the whole system for 52 weeks. So in my opinion, that's kind of a negative. You have to wait a whole year before you're done the second thing is it does tend to be very tedious and very boring lots of long tones and um, pedal tones and although Claude tried to make these um, not so boring by the formatting that he did with different patterns it's still rather tedious and rather boring uh, but yet it still works he's still right you still have to do long tones um, you can't really short cut that one out um, so anyway, I did make some decent gains um, after um, two years of doing it, um, and uh, but that was about all I could do. And um, after that, I incorporated bits and pieces of the Claude Gordon for myself. And um, I don't know, maybe it was about 10 years ago, I was playing around with it, and I was trying to figure out uh, how could I actually take his method, kind of make it my own in a way, I mean, after all, arpeggios, um, he's not the first one that came up with arpeggios ascending, right? And I don't know if he's the first one that came up with pelotons, but um, I wanted just to tweak his method into my own. And But the only reason I would want to do that would be if people could get better results, if I could get better results and quicker results. Otherwise, what would be the point? So anyway, after playing around with it for many years, I came up with a system of I guess you could call it Claude Gordon it has the essence of Claude Gordon it's not really um, uh, his actual method in other words if you talk to a current Claude Gordon disciple right now that's 
very devoted to Claude Gordon method and everything, and maybe even studied with him, um, they would probably look at my method and say, hey, that doesn't really seem anything at all like Claude Gordon. And they might be right, but it does have the essence of Claude Gordon in this particular technique. Um, some of the things that I've changed. Uh, number one, I've tried to make this very, very intense. And as a result, instead of doing this every day, as Claude would have you do, I have you do it every other day. In some cases, I have you do this particular technique every two days or sometimes even only twice a week. Um, have you ever been to the gym? Have you ever been in any kind of exercise program and missed a couple days and got back in thinking you weren't going to do that well, but you ended up being stronger, having better endurance? Yes, I figured that out myself too. And so by taking Claude Gordon, making it more intense, but backing off on the, on the, um, the daily practice of it, which she probably wouldn't like to hear, but uh, believe it or not, you actually get quicker gains and um, higher gains. So that would be one. What's this intensity that I'm talking about? Claude, in his most of his, um, I think in all of it actually, especially the ones where you're ascending higher, he would, at the very uh, bottom of that, he would say, and it was kind of funny too, because it would go up to double C, and he would say, go as high as possible, which for most trumpet players should be very laughable because most trumpet players are not going that high anyway. But what he would say is um, continue up as high as possible and then make a couple of attempts at that last hideout and then rest at least an hour. Okay, so basically if you have, let's say, a high C range, you get up to high C and you can't go any further, maybe you're trying to hit the D flat a couple times in a row, well, following the systematic approach, you would actually stop then and um, rest an hour then he's got other things for you to do so that's one thing that i've actually changed in this particular one the other thing is that almost all his stuff um, ascending throughout the 52 week systematic approach when you start the ascending patterns whether they're arpeggios or whatnot he almost always has you start on the pedal c now i have another um, extremely um, wonderful technique for pedal tones and so not needing to be redundant, I've cut out starting on pedal C, and so we just start on low C. So you cut out that whole octave. Uh, don't worry, uh, at least in my other programs, especially the upper register program, we have a very thorough and a very potent approach to pedal tones. And uh, anyway, those are two ways. Um, actually, that's three ways now. So. Um, we're making it more intense because we're not stopping at the note that you can no longer get. For example, you go to high C, you can't get it. Another time, you can't get it. You make another attempt and then you're done. Nope. We don't do that um, in, in my program. What we do is if you went up to high C, let's say you got it. Great. Now, you go up to high D flat and it either doesn't come out or it comes out less than a big sounding forte note. We still continue up and we mark this as hitting error note number one now I'm, i make the mention of hitting error because at some point you will be hitting error and we try to go five half steps beyond your current playable range now here's something interesting for you to think about if you were to go up to d flat to d to e flat to e and f and let's say the e and the f are not coming out at all you really are just playing air there's only one part of you that knows you're not playing those notes. And what part is that? This part. But this part here is not aware that you're not playing those notes. So if you start putting the impact and the force all on here, um, your body has to adapt. Your face has to adapt to these notes. You, it's like you're faking it until you make it, my friend. And so this is a real sweet, sweet bit of information uh, that you really want to have when you're doing this method. Actually, um, my method. So you're actually forcing yourself to go above and beyond uh, where you can go, faking it until you make it. And this is what stimulates this super fast response in your chops, 
your tongue, the arch, everything, and the whole mechanism, you're putting a tremendous force on yourself that you otherwise wouldn't. Because normally, wouldn't you just stop at the high C or you go for the D flat a few times and you're done? So we're making this super intense and you're going five half steps above and beyond um, what you could play. What would be a usable playing note and say like a lead, uh, uh, a big band or rock or I guess even symphonic. So today I'm going to start and assume as if you have about a high C range and that's about it. So you can play along with me. And for those of you don't who don't have high C, you can um, stop the video after you get to where you get, let's say, let's say it's G above the staff, that's fine, just stop it. And you'll continue your five hitting air notes, half steps above that particular note on your own. Um, let's see what else. For those of you who can go a lot higher than high C, um, obviously you'll probably want to stop the video too and continue on until you reach the point where you can't get a big forte sounding note. And then you would begin the five half steps that would go above that called hitting air. The reason I call it hitting air is because we're not trying to sneak in the note. How many of you with uh, double G ranges barely can sneak in on that double G? But if you go to pound it out in, for example, an arpeggio style, G, B, D, double G, it doesn't use like you're overblown, it doesn't want to come out. So that's what I'm talking about. We're not going to sneak in on these notes. So when you go up to any of the notes of this method that I'm doing, you're actually going full force and full power. And, uh, and that includes the hitting air notes, which will give you the propensity of actually hitting air on some of those notes. But you keep playing through the note um, as if you're, the note is actually sounding out and you have all the intensity as if you are playing that note. Your body gets the signal really, really quickly and you adapt and you get a lot stronger. And uh, you're going to be pretty amazed if you do it um, my way. And the way that's been proven by so many other people that have um, done it this way, gone through my programs, it's actually um, almost a little bit miraculous. So um, you have to give it a chance. And again, for those of you who are staunch Claude Gordon disciples, and uh, you know, I, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was one, but I definitely believed in his stuff and um, can't take anything away from him. Yes, you will say that this is not pure a pure Claude Gordon technique, and it really isn't. But again, it has the essence of Claude Gordon, so try to keep an open mind. It is different. So, without further ado, go ahead and join me on this um, practice session here using this technique. I like to tongue these legato, and I practice taking the breath after the third half note, so I have plenty of power, and um, I make the top note a little bit louder and a little bit longer. And I also rest in between each one. So here we go. And by the way, I'm using this as a warm-up today. I have not played before now. So we'll see what happens. Might get a couple of chip notes here. We're starting on low C. flat 
two, three, four, five, E. staff now F here we go the video if you can actually go above high C and you know that you can you're not hitting air notes and but you want to pause and rest up to three minutes one minute at a minimum I prefer three minutes this is act the octave and should you have a fantastic range already and you're going to go to the double C or beyond you'll need to rest at least a three minutes there the double C 